All right, folks, so I'm going to do a little quickie here um, about a recent-ish acquisition um, for a yet another Persian rifle. And as you guys know, I absolutely love my Persian rifles. And this one is certainly a little uh, unique and different in the sense of, you can see, it is quite a small, relatively small speaking, uh, carbine. But not just any carbine, because there are a lot of Mauser carbines out there. This one is particularly uh, interesting and different for the kind of carbine that it is. So, um, I have a very uh, kind of oldish now previous video on on, uh, on Persian Mausers and a little bit of history about those things, so I'm not going to repeat that here. Uh, but this one has its own particular history as well that I'll, I'll cover a little bit. But um, as uh, as people know, and as at least the research I've looked at has shown. Um, the majority of uh, Persian rifles were made by the Czechs way, way back when. Um, we're talking like, uh, what, 1930s uh, around there? And um, so it wasn't, it wasn't just standard infantry length rifles either. It was um, a uh, substantial number of carbines, but also some even shorter, uh, what we would probably refer to as cavalry carbines. Um, and a lot of other nations have also done this kind of setup where they've had um, standard issue carbines that are shorter than the regular rifles. But then they also have specialized carbines like for uh, engineers or, um, uh, well, engineers, cavalry carbines can also be uh, a little bit shorter than the regular carbines. Uh, I believe Germany did this as well with all their different variations of Mauser. I think the Mountain Troops, um, uh, I, forget the, I forget the German name for them, but the Mountain Troop, um, I think it was like 30 slash 44 rifles, something like that. I forget the actual designation, but their, their rifles had special um, butt plates, like big metal ones. And this was all, the, the whole stock design was different. And the rifles were incredibly short. Um, you know, shorter than even a, uh, a K98, which is, you could, you could consider that a carbine compared to the Gewehr 98 length, which is like, you know, absolutely enormous. It's huge, um, you know, compared to something handy like this. Um, so this is definitely the more specialized type of carbine from the already short or shorter carbines from standard length rifles. So uh, I unfortunately do not have a standard, um, standard length carbine uh, Persian. I only have this uh, cavalry one here. And uh, the reason why they call them cavalry carbines is probably because they were actually used by cavalry, if you can believe it. Uh, but also because they have um, different, different sling um, loops and attachments and things like that. So the other uh, Persian carbine that I've seen has uh, what other countries have done with their rifles as well, is they have a, uh, a sling knot that's through, through the wrist, through the stock, here that goes um, on the sides rather than on the bottom here. It goes right through the center here and it's either on the left or right side. Um, you'll see that a lot with um, like Steyr M95 carbines. They have a, 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 usually a sling loop here on top of the side. Uh, but this one has it here. This one swivels here on the bottom just a little bit. Um, you know, no sling loop here. But interestingly, it has this big honking ring here on the side, but also one underneath as well and also uh, keeping the bayonet lug. So um, this one uh, is a little bit different from the uh, regular Persian carbine. So the regular Persian carbine does not necessarily have the big ring like this. It has a flatter uh, oval shaped ring like that. Uh, also the front sights I've seen have been a little bit different. Um, this one has the very uh, you know, convenient giveaway of the front sight being hooded and machined in all one piece like this. Uh, this is a dead giveaway for Persian barrels, um, Persian rifles, usually. But I have seen on some Persian carbines, not the cavalry carbines, but regular carbines, um, this front sight hood is not here, and it looks just like uh, an unprotected front sight that just has the barley corn sight. But this one is absolutely 100% Persian because only the Persians have their Mauser rifles with that kind of uh, front sight arrangement. So. But an odd thing uh, about this, this particular example, almost nothing on this gun matches, which is surprising because, uh, for a number of reasons. But also when, when I, uh, I destocked this, um, the actual metal uh, for the 
receiver, the, the barrel, uh, all the important parts except the bolt um, was, was basically brand new. Uh, it, it, it had looked like it had been unaffected really by uh, age, elements, time, weather, etc. Um, you know, except for the exposed part, I guess, you know, right, right around the muzzle here, you can see a little bit of wear. That's to be expected because it's not covered by wood and stock. But on the inside, this thing looked absolutely just pristine, super clean. Um, the wood itself, the stock is not original to this gun. Uh, I can tell that because of the extremely, extremely faint, I don't even know if you can see in there. Um, I can see them in person, but right here is where the usual uh, serial number will be for Persian rifles, and this one does not match the one on the receiver right here. So the stock is not original to this gun, but it is a cavalry carbine stock. So I would assume at some point in this rifle's life, when it was still in Iran, um, the armorers decided to replace the stock on this with another one. So it's not unusual to see too in a lot of nations' militaries. They'll, they'll, back then the, the, the matching wasn't so much important as it was to create uh, say like one functional rifle out of the bits and pieces of many. So you could have three broken rifles, but if you take all the parts and put them together and you fix them and re-arsenal it basically, um, you could have one more functional rifle. And it's not, not unusual to see that for uh, nation's military rifles, uh, even today. So um, yeah, this stock is not original, but it is of the correct type. Um, the bolt on this gun is absolutely not matching, and it is not Persian either, because there are no there are no Persian markings on this bolt whatsoever. But considering the fact that these these rifles are based off of the uh, uh, Czech designs, you can put Czech uh, Mauser bolts in these and have them work. It's the same size, it's the same shape, it's it's the same everything. But you, obviously, you still want to check headspace, but. Um, yeah, it's very, very simple to take a Czech Mauser bolt and put it into a Persian gun. And as far as I've seen, it works every time. Um, but uh, it, it's, it is a little unusual, though, that any Persian rifle does not have a matching bolt, because most of them I've seen do have matching bolts. So this one, however, does not. And uh, this has uh, very clearly uh, what I would suspect are Czech markings. So. This bolt has come from something else, but it does work, so I have no complaints there. I do wish it was matching, of course, or at least Persian in origin, but uh, this serves just as well. Uh, another unusual feature that I, I, I cannot, I can't seem to find the research on is whether or not the rear sight here, and you can see it, those are obviously uh, English uh, numbers, right? So. I, I just I don't know for sure if these these rifles originally came with uh, English number um, uh, sights or if they were like the infantry rifles where the markings are all in Farsi. Um, I have not seen enough examples of these cavalry carvings to really say for sure. And even then, um, ju just seeing examples with that does not necessarily guarantee that that was how they came originally. Because these things obviously have seen a lot of history, they've seen a lot of use. It could be a, a simple swap of someone saying, hey, you know, that, that doesn't seem right. Let me go get an original uh, Farsi marked uh, rear sight and just swap it out and put that on there. Because they assumed, maybe like I did, that these things originally came with uh, Farsi marked uh, rear sights. So I have no idea. Um, I would wager that, uh, you know, obviously these are. Uh, an order uh, to the Czechs from Persia at the time, I would it would make sense to assume that they would manufacture them with Farsi rear sights, but I have been wrong about some of those things before about different things, and maybe the Czechs were being really obstinate about how they wanted to make their rear sights. I don't know the nature or you know, uh, the history of that deal, but um, I'd be willing to suspect that these originally did come with Farsi marked rear sights. But considering the Czech Mausers are very, very uh, prevalent and much more common than Persians are, it wouldn't surprise me either that throughout the history of this gun, maybe its own actual service life and not just being a, a collector piece over here in the States, that something happened to the rear sight through use, they got damaged somehow, 
And they said, well, we don't have any of the Farsi ones lying around. Let's just get a Czech one and just slap it on there and call it call the day. Uh, I would not be surprised. Considering the things that have been uh, obviously replaced on this rifle and the overall condition of it, um, I would definitely say this is an example that has been um, ridden around with and carried a lot and shot very little. Um, and I would say maybe not very well cared for on the, on the external components uh, because they had to replace the bolt for some reason. This is, this is not an original bolt. Uh, it takes a lot, I would imagine, to, to destroy a bolt like that. So maybe, maybe the original owner was, you know, shooting the old ammo back then, corrosive stuff, and uh, was not cleaning the gun maybe as much as they should have. I mean, the, the, the rifling is great. It's just, I can't imagine what other reasons you would need to, to replace a bolt uh, on a rifle like this. Um, but yeah, the stock being replaced, this rear sight maybe not being original. Um, you know, the exterior condition of the uh, sling loops uh, would, would really make me think that this is something that was riding around on someone's horseback for a while, um, you know, but obviously not shot very much because the internal condition is just phenomenal. I mean, heck, this, this original stock, uh, this, not original, this, this stock, when I destocked it, um, had so much sand in there. Uh, <laughs> you know, when I, when I took everything out, I was looking at it, I'm like, wow, that's a lot of dust in there. But I literally took the stock, turned it over like this, and just shaking it a little bit, and all the sand was just coming out of this thing. Um, it's absolutely filthy. Uh, so that really suggests to me that this, someone really was riding around in, in, in the desert with this thing at some point which I think is pretty cool, um, especially because I can probably guess which desert it, it, it was, um, you know, because there's only so many deserts in Iran, but um, still very, very cool to think about who used to own slash operate this weapon back in Iran at the time. So, but yeah, this is, um, it's an important distinction to make for uh, the Persian carbines because I think there are like three or four different variations of them that I've seen. Um, that I, I can at least confirm were, in fact, uh, legit uh, Persian rifles. So you have, you know, you get the standard infantry length uh, rifle. You have the, uh, which, which is Czech produced. You have the Czech produced uh, Persian carbine, which is not this. It's just, it's, it's, it's a little bit, I think it's a little bit longer than this, just a tiny bit, just a hair. And it has the different sling loop, like I was mentioning. Um, and different um, sling attach points here in the stock. And um, yeah, then, then you have the check produced, also this Calvary carbine, but I'm gonna refer to it as the Calvary carbine. And then you have the Iranian produced, um, I think it's M44, M49 carbines. I wanna say it's M49 carbines, which are made in Iran, which uh, those are very, very obvious what those are because um, not only does it say on the receiver in Farsi where it was made. Um, the serial numbers are also different and uh, the quality is much worse than the Czech made ones. But I have also seen another variant which I'm not quite sure what, uh, where it was from, who made it, either the Iranians or the Czechs or when it was made. But I have seen carbines um, that have a cutout here in the stock where a sling would normally go through. So like if you operated like a M48 Yugoslavian or a K98, they have a big cut in the stock here for a sling to go through. Um, I have seen some um, some Persian carbines with that kind of stock. I just, I don't know if that's how they originally came or if that is a particular type of model, a different type of model that the uh, Iranians were using. Uh, I Honestly, I don't know. And uh, a lot of the research that uh, I, I try to do for these things is um, not very clear on, on the origins of, 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 these, of these rifles. Uh, I did see at a source one time that said, I think um, that's where like 30,000 30, carbines were ordered and maybe like 100,000 or so, maybe, two, maybe more of the rifle length uh, rifles. Um, so the carbines were definitely a, a lower number than the standard infantry models, which makes sense. That's what a lot of countries did back then. Um, you know, carbines were meant for more specialized troops anyways, not rank and file. So that makes sense to me. I have absolutely no idea how many of these cavalry carbines were produced. I can't imagine it was too many because um, these things obviously are meant for cavalry. Um, <clears throat> uh, I think on 
some of these, it will say the Persian word either for artillery or cavalry. I can't quite make it out on here, but um, I believe the Persian word for cavalry is savare, and uh, for artillery it would just be tup or tup khane. Um, so if if the stocks are marked that way, that, 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 not, that does not necessarily imply that the rifle was meant for that particular type of troop. Unless, of course, it is in fact matching to the serial number on the receiver. And in that case, you can absolutely say that that, that rifle was meant for that particular type of troop. I have seen cavalry and I have seen artillery uh, examples, but I don't know if they really standardized on what, what the uh, exact model or length of them were going to be. Because like I said, the, the actual non-cavalry carvings are actually, I think, I think very slightly, just a little bit longer. And the, the distance here um, between this band and this band here is also, I think, very slightly longer on the regular car, uh, carvings. It's very, very easy to miss unless you have them like right next to each other. Because a lot of the pictures I was looking at, man, they look super, super similar. But anyway, um, yeah, I, I try to do a lot of research, a lot of digging on these things. And man, I would, I'm talking like, I'm not even just reading just the English stuff, which a lot of the English stuff has a lot of misconceptions and a lot of things that are probably not quite right. Because let's be honest here, there's not a whole lot of people in the world who uh, are one, interested in military, old military rifles like this, old Milser, two, uh, are bilingual in Farsi and English, right? There's not a lot of people who do that. So, um, yeah, it, it is, it is hard <laughs> to, to research, uh, on any, on any weapons that are, you know, from a country that has a foreign language that is not particularly, uh, well known or as common as say, I don't know, German, right? So this is, this is not what you would call a Western world, world rifle. So, um, but anyway, that's enough about the history of these things. Uh, at least what I could find out, you know, uh, I'm sure there's somebody out there who's far more knowledgeable about these things than I am. I might ask up the, um, there's a guy on YouTube, I think he goes by Bruno Khan. Um, he, he does a lot of old Milser uh, videos uh, like me, and, uh, but he does it all in Farsi. And, and I, I can pick up a few things here and there. I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm exactly 100% able to pick up every single word he's saying, but I can get the gist of it. Uh, I might ask him for some help. I, don't, I just don't know how strong his English is. Um, so that may be a little bit of a challenge to communicate with them over something uh, that's a very, I would say, a technical subject. So um, we'll see where that goes, though. But uh, anyway, let's talk about how this thing shoots. So this thing being like a really, really like small compact carving, man, this, this thing kicks the daylights out of you. It hurts. <laughs> it's it's extremely handy. And it's very very nice to shoot the the, the bolts the bolt action on this is um, I would say a lot smoother and a lot easier to do than the per, uh, than the uh, infantry rifles with the straight bolts uh, a curved bolt really is uh, a lot faster and uh, to me it feels a lot smoother and quicker um, on this rifle than it does with my infantry rifles um, that being said though it has a little disadvantage because because it is so short the sight radius is you know from there. Here to there, right? <laughs> As compared to the the infantry length rifles, which are like just freaking enormous. Uh, you know, you can reach to the next county with that sight radius. Um, this one's much much shorter, so it makes it a little harder to shoot this accurately at distance. Then again, this was never meant to be a matched target rifle, anyways. So as long as you can hit somebody at 100 yards, 200 yards, you know, three, four hundred, even I think you could do with this rifle, no problem. Um, you know, that's really what it was meant for. So you can certainly do that and it's quite capable. Uh, the trigger on this is also much better, uh, I think, than the, the two infantry rifles that I have. But I mean, that's also not entirely the entire picture because this thing has been used quite a bit. Uh, it's got, this is the, the most wear I've seen on any of my Persian rifles that I've had, um, except maybe for one. But, you know, being used like this, actually used and carried around and everything, it just has a more uh, broken in trigger. Versus my infantry rifles, uh, one of them is literally unfired except from the factory. Uh, that thing is a very heavy trigger. It's a very clean trigger, but it's just very heavy at the same time because it is basically brand new. Uh, and then my other infantry rifle, that one also has a heavy trigger, but not quite as heavy as the unfired one, but still heavier than this. So this one is 
much more quicker and much more fun, I think, to shoot than either of those. Uh, as long as I can handle the recoil, though. This is not a rifle that you want to sit down and shoot all afternoon. It just it'll beat the crap out of you. So I do not care to, um, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I will wear a, a recoil pad when I shoot this thing because uh, I want to enjoy what I shoot, you know, <laughs> and not have to fear and flinch over this thing. Um, but yeah, it, uh, I mean, it's a Mauser. It shoots like a Mauser. It's super reliable. It's fast. You know, it's very accurate. I think the, the best accuracy I was able to get out of this was right around 2.8 inches at 100 yards using PPU. So, um, certainly capable. I imagine this thing can do better because, like I said, I think the best groups I got with the infantry rifles was 1.4 inches at 100 yards, which is more, more than enough you'll need for this kind of thing. And considering what I was able to do with the Yugoslavian M48, which is, you know, a carbine-sized Mauser, um, you know, it's a little bit bigger than this one, but not by much. You know, being able to hit a man sized target out to 600 yards with irons every single time, you know, the, the accuracy potential for these, these kinds of rifles is just more than I think most people are capable of, myself included. So... Yeah, uh, they certainly don't make them like they used to, that's for sure. And uh, the Czechs really, I think, outdid themselves when it came to at least the Persian run of, um, of Mausers. Their own individual Czech Mausers that they made for themselves. I, I have never seen a Czech Mauser in like really good shape like the Persians, but I would imagine that's because the Czechs are, uh, they have a much more, I don't know, shall we say involved or violent history. <laughs> For a number of reasons, right? I'm not saying Iran didn't fight anybody for the number of years that they had these rifles. They absolutely did. But uh, it's not quite the same. It's not quite the same. Um, so, and there are cases too where, you know, um, like my per one of my Persian rifles, like I said, is basically brand new. It was never issued or fired as far as I know. Um, but I have never seen a basically factory new Czech Mauser ever. So... Um, I really would like to get a Czech Mauser one day just to compare to the Persians and see how they stack up. I imagine they'd be just as nice, uh, you know. But, uh, yeah, obviously I have an affinity for the Persian stuff because I know Farsi and I really appreciate the uh, Iranian uh, tragic history, shall we say. It's really nice to own a, uh, a rifle from, a, uh, from the original Persia, which no longer exists because now it's the Islamic Republic of Iran. And, yeah, we don't... We don't want to get into that, but, uh, you know, this, this crest here, that's another thing I really love about these Persian rifles is the crests on these things. I don't know if it'll focus, but yeah, they're just really pretty and a, uh, constant reminder of the, uh, of the old power, the old Shah. So, but yeah, uh, this is, uh, the only example I have ever seen of, uh, well, in person anyways, of a, uh, Persian cavalry slash artillery carbine. I think I think the artillery carbines are the same. I just don't know. Um, and I don't think there's a lot of research out there on these things. So I'm content with calling it a cavalry carbine. So, because it follows, like I said, roughly the same form factor as other countries, say Argentina, right? Argentine uh, Mausers, they, at least the 1891 patterns, they had all different kinds of things. Uh, they had the full length rifles, they had the uh, cavalry carbines, which had um, the stock going up to the to the tip of the muzzle here. They had their engineer carbines. They had um, all sorts of different models and variations that they did and ordered from the Germans and so on and so forth. So uh, I'm content to call this a cavalry carbine. So yeah, uh, pretty cool Persian cavalry carbine. And uh, I'm very happy to have this piece uh, because it's not the standard infantry rifles, which you see pretty much everywhere. Persian. Persian rifles, when they, they do show up, tend to be the infantry rifles. Um, so I'm very happy to be able to have a nice cavalry carving in decent shape, too. I wouldn't say uh, super duper collectible shape, but a shooter for sure. So, well, that's all I got to say about these things. Um, like I said, I, I really wish there was more hit, uh, research available on these things, at least that I could find. Because um, I'd really like to know the exact details of the nature of these things. But, uh, you know... Um, Given the regime change and the language barriers and all that kind of stuff, it's uh, it's a little difficult to get information on these. So, I'm sure the uh, German World War II Mauser collectors know all about that, 
destroyed records, destroyed factories, the whole gambit, you know how it goes. So anyway, just figured I'd bring that to you guys and uh, let you enjoy just a really cool piece of history, I think. So yeah, that's all I got to say about that and I'll see you next time.